Okay, this is the next in my series of educational videos on centronuclear myopathy. And particularly, this video will focus on the inheritance patterns for the centronuclear myopathies. And by inheritance, what I mean is the way that a condition is passed down from one generation to the next, the way that it is inherited, the way that the genes and chromosomes pass from parents to their offspring. And in general, within genetics, inheritance patterns are characterized as being either X-linked or autosomal. And we'll talk about that uh, in the context of centronuclear myopathy. So just a little background first. X-linked means that the condition or gene is located on the X chromosome. The X chromosome is one of the two sex chromosomes. You know, chromosomes that dictate the gender of the offspring are the X and Y chromosomes. So the X is one of those. Uh, and in general, you know, males have an X and a Y chromosome, whereas females have two X chromosomes. Autosomal chromosomes are the non-sex chromosomes. You know, so basically, the dozens of other chromosomes uh, that are present in uh, all of the uh, human cells. So then, let's uh, take this a step further. The X-linked conditions, since a mother has, you know, since a woman in general has two X chromosomes, if she has one that is normal and one that is abnormal, she is going to be a carrier for that abnormal version of the uh, gene. But she'll have another version of the gene that's normal, so that she'll probably be clinically OK. So again, women have two X chromosomes. If one is abnormal, the normal one will kick in and sort of compensate for the one that's abnormal. And therefore, the woman will be a carrier of the abnormality. But she herself will probably not have significant or substantial symptoms, or certainly not as uh, full-blown as uh, that of her affected son. Boys inherit the X chromosome from their mom and the Y chromosome from their dad. And therefore, out of the two X chromosomes that the mother had, if one was normal and one was abnormal, there is a 50% chance for each of her sons as to whether he is going to inherit her abnormal X chromosome or her normal X chromosome. If he inherits the abnormal X chromosome, then he will be affected by the X-linked condition. Autosomal chromosomes, we have pairs of all of these chromosomes. So, you know, for chromosome number, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, etc., there's two of each on those one that comes from the mom and one that comes from the dad. And within your autosomal genetic condition would be one that's uh, on one of these non sex chromosomes. And within that, it's broken down into whether the condition is considered dominant or recessive, depending upon how many copies of that abnormal version of the gene do you need in order to cause the disorder. So if a, uh, an abnormal version of the gene, though a mutation, for example, is causing a dominant medical condition, dominant uh, inheritance pattern, what that means is that if you have two copies of this gene, even if one copy is abnormal, that will be enough to cause the disorder. That's the opposite of what you see with a re recessive condition, where you need both copies of the gene, both versions of the gene, uh, one on each of the two chromosomes, you know, one from mom, one from dad, to be abnormal in order to have the condition. So then, just to you know, summarize again, you have X-linked conditions, and you have autosomal conditions. And the autosomal conditions are broken down into autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive. So if you just remember these three different types of inheritance patterns, you'll understand at least the basic framework that you need to know for centronuclear myopathies and really for all genetic conditions, X-linked, autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive. So what I've done here is to create a table, you know, just to display in hopefully a clear, uh, easy to read, uh, easy to understand way, the different genes that are involved in the different versions or uh, subcategories of centronuclear myopathies. What gene is involved? What protein is it coding for? And what is the inheritance pattern for each of those specific subtypes of centronuclear myopathy. Starting off with the most common uh, of these and the longest known version, which is the MTM1 gene mutation, causes problems with a protein called myotubularin. And this causes an X-linked inheritance pattern. And this is typically referred to as X-linked myotubular myopathy. Sometimes you'll see that abbreviated as X-linked MTM or you know, XL. MTM for X-linked myotubular myopathy. The X-linked MTM affects essentially boys exclusively. Women, if they're uh, you know if they're uh, carrying this mutation, typically would be a carrier 
who does not have symptoms or certainly does not have the uh, full-blown symptoms that you know, half of her sons would have. The next one is the DNM2 gene uh, coding for a protein called Dynamin2. This is causes an autosomal dominant type of inheritance pattern. So from either parent, if the child has even just one abnormal version of that particular gene, they can develop this Dynamin2 version of centronuclear myopathy. The RYR1 gene codes for a protein called Ryanidine receptor 1. And this is interesting in that it can have either an autosomal dominant or an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. Both of those have been described. Next gene, BIN1, codes for a protein called amphiphysin 2 And this has an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern, which would mean that the child would need to get two ver abnormal versions of the gene, one on each of the pair of chromosomes. So essentially having inherited an abnormal gene from both the mother and an abnormal gene from the father. Similarly for the next one, uh, the TTN uh, gene uh, coding for a protein called Titan. Uh, this also is autosomal recessive, so again, the, the child would need to have inherited a uh, abnormal copy of the gene from both the mom and from the dad. Now, and these things are a general rule of thumb. Of course, it's always possible for any of these to have a spontaneous mutation where neither of the parents had an abnormal version of the gene and you know, the child is the uh, first one you know, in the family tree to have the condition uh, or even be a carrier for the condition. So that's my overview on you know, the different genes, the different proteins, the different inheritance pattern. So there is still research going on to find other genetic mutations that cause centronuclear myopathy. Why does it matter? Uh, well, you know, the reason why the inheritance pattern uh, matters is because it highlights that there are different risks for boys and girls, and it's important for family planning and medical decision making. Boys versus girls, for example, if a mother is pregnant and she has a family history of centronuclear myopathy, and let's say that she knows that the gender of the pregnancy, let's say that she knows that it's a boy or she knows that it's a girl, her ability to assess what the risk is for that child really depends upon what genetic form of centronuclear myopathy she is a carrier for. It would be wise to have a genetic counselor involved and to know the specific genetic type of the centronuclear myopathy so that you could evaluate you know, what the risks are for the offspring. So for example, if she was pregnant with a girl and she has a family history of specifically X-linked myotubular myopathy, and if they're certain through ultrasound or whatever other testing that she's pregnant with a girl, well, the girl is not going to be at risk for developing full-blown X-linked myotubular myopathy. So the mother uh, and the father could have that reassurance during the pregnancy. Whereas on the other hand, if she's pregnant with a boy and she herself is a carrier for X-linked MTM, then it's important for uh, her to understand that you know, there is a 50% chance that that boy will have full-blown X-linked myotubular myopathy. And you know, medical team readiness would then become important because she's delivering that child full term to deliver it in a setting where there's a uh, acute medical care team that can take care of that child because chances are that child is going to need lots of uh, acute, aggressive, active medical management even within the first few minutes of life. So that's going to be important. So it's, it's important also just for the parents to understand what their risks are. So as they're deciding on, you know, their family size or whether to adopt or, you know, rather than have their own children or how many children to have so that they can actually understand, well, what are the chances that any given child is going to be uh, affected? And again, a genetic counselor could help you with this, you know, far more than just my video would. Um, it's, it's important, of course, uh, you know, to think about family screening and relatives. Relatives will also often be wondering in the back of their head, my brother or my nephew or my cousin or someone has this uh, you know, genetic uh, condition, are we at risk for this in our branch of the family tree? And by knowing the inheritance pattern, it can help to know what relatives do not need to worry about whether they're carriers for this condition or at risk for this con you know, condition or others where you know, they may be at risk for uh, ha having the uh, centronuclear myopathy mutation in their branch of the family tree, so to speak, uh, and therefore they could have the genetic screening done to see if indeed they are carriers uh, of the, mu of the uh, mutation that runs in a given family or not.
Okay, so that's my summary on the different inheritance patterns for the types or groups of centronuclear myopathies as they're currently known now in late 2012. Uh, again, having reviewed for you, you know, the ones that are X-linked, autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful for you. Feel free to uh, comment on the video, share the video. I look forward to reading your comments uh, down below. And the other things I would point out would be the importance of genetic testing. Discuss it with your doctor. Discuss it with a genetic counselor. Reach out and network. Reach out and find other families, uh, other patients that are affected. Uh, educate yourself uh, and you know, support the researchers so that they can you know, help to move things forward.